Okay, this is Jacob Schmidt with DeerHuntingSchool.com. Um, today I want to talk about hunting the wind just a, just a, for a, you know, a moment or two. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is um, something I see. Uh, I've seen on several deer hunting videos. I've seen it on YouTube from a few guys talking about hunting the wind. Um, things like that. And what it is is, is a lot of these, se several of these people are... Um, that I'm talking about, the people I'm talking about, what they're doing is they're explaining how the deer will walk up with the, their nose into the wind and quartering into the wind all the time. And honestly, that's just not the case. Um, it's entirely impossible for a deer to walk with his nose in the wind all the time. And they're saying that these mature bucks and these older bucks are walking with their nose in the wind. If that was the case, guys, um, in my home state in Arkansas, we have uh, several times where the wind comes out of the southwest um, and out of the south um, a lot. We have a lot of southerly winds. Um, if that was the case, because I remember several times of doing that for a uh, week, two weeks, three weeks at a time without changing directions. Um, if that was the case, all of our deer would be down in Texas and Louisiana and other states. Guys, they would, it's impossible. Okay. And there are studies that have shown that deer will live in a relatively small area. Um, smaller than a lot of people realize. And people will think, uh, a lot of people think that, that uh, does, actual does range is smaller than bucks. And that's really not the case. A mature buck, um, there's a smart buck on pressure areas and stuff. Guys, he, his core area is a lot smaller than most of the deer in the herd. And that's how he survives and stay alive is because his his core area now yeah he'll he'll wander out in the rut um, looking for does but his his actual core area is is much smaller than all the deer around and that's how he survives is because he stays in that in that small area where no one goes um, where he's safe um, that's how he gets to be a mature buck in pressured area heavy hunted areas things like that um, now, non-pressure areas, their, their range will open up and things. But the point is, guys, there's no way that that buck, this mature five-and-a-half-year-old buck that these guys are talking about that supposedly walks with his nose into the wind, there's no way he can do that and live in such a small area and stay alive very long. Um, if that was the case, all you'd have to do would be hunt across wind all the time and you'd kill all the deer, all the deer you ever wanted um, because they just, they're not like zombies. That'd be like zombie fight. Okay, um, it would be like if you if you've ever played any zombie games, which I have kids and we play zombie games sometimes. The zombies just kind of walk in one direction, and, and deer are not zombies. They they don't they'll feed and wander in different directions and things like that. Um, so just flat out, they do not walk with their nose to the wind at all times. It's they don't. I've seen many of many a deer uh, walking with the wind to their back, wind to their side, all over the place. And if they did, um, what the heck would they do when the wind changes directions 10 times in, in an hour? I mean, the deer would walk this way for 10 seconds and then turn around and walk the other way for 10 seconds and then turn around and walk this way. I mean, they would be just walking, wandering around in one spot. Um, so it's not the case. And I have a course on hunting the wind that goes into much more detail of, of uh, hunting the wind than just uh, wind direction because it's it's a lot more to it than just wind direction. Scent control, using the wind for for, for scent control, is a lot more to it than just just the wind direction, guys. You have other things that affects wind direction like terrain. Terrain will change the wind direction, things like that. Um, thermals, all of them come together. Timing, guys. Uh, timing of the wind, timing of the thermals, uh, timing of all, of all this all plays together. You've got therm you've got wind direction, you've got thermals, and you've got um, terrain, and they all affect each other, okay? And without putting each one of them into um, a single, putting each one of them all together and thinking about them all as one and thinking about them all separately and doing that, without doing that, guys, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to understand how to hunt the wind. Um, so I have a course, and there's a link below in the description. It'll take you to that course if you want. But all you got to do really is just go to DeerHuntingSchool.com. Um, online courses, How to Hunt the Wind. Um, I've got uh, 
as of right now, I've got two courses. I'm working on some others. I'm getting them together um, and things like that. But, but you can go check out the course. It really goes into much more greater detail on, on hunting the wind than just, just simply that deer walk with their nose to the wind because that's not the case. Um, it's impossible for a deer to do that. They're not going to do that. Um, they're not zombies. They're not just out walking with their nose to the wind. Um, that would be crazy. Now, deer do use their nose a extremely lot more than than I think a lot of people realize. Um, but they don't use it in that sense that they always keep the wind in their favor. Um, their nose is much stronger and much better than that. Um, so, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Jacob with DeerHuntingSchool.com. Um, check out DeerHuntingSchool.com for more information on deer hunting um, tips things like that. Leave me comments, ask questions, things like that, guys. Um, I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day, and bye-bye.